G'day everyone, Seth CS Supercoach, providing Supercoach content for you. I'm here to present Rant and Rave episode one. And uh, on today's episode, it is featuring Tom Stewart. Now, I put out a tweet saying um, that also Tanner Bruin and Sava Radicalier would also be involved. Um, uh, I sent that tweet out, I think, halfway through the first quarter. Sorry, second quarter. And uh, they definitely proved me wrong. So... If you guys might not notice, um, Tom Stewart going down and getting subbed off. The second he did, I turned to alcohol. I needed needed it because, oh boy, it was awful. Um, but look, I'll get into Bruin and Radicalia first. Tanner Bruin, I think, is just really stiff. Um, I think his role was very good. Um, I was liking what I saw. But uh, someone put sticky uh, super glue on his bench uh, seat and he stuck there. And he he had 66% time on ground, as one of my mates mentions, which is no good. And uh, I think... I think Bruin fans have the uh, have Bruin owners have the right to be disappointed because I think it was just harshly treated by him. Um, am I disappointed with not having him? Uh, well, am I disappointed? Uh, n- no, to be honest. But I think it's really stiff for Bruin uh, owners. So I think, look, I think it's just a tough pill to swallow. Um. What did he score in the end? Uh, I'm not sure if scaling's happened or not. It might not have. He, he's on 58. I'm pretty sure scaling hasn't happened yet, so it might go up or down or whatever. But he was looking really good in the first half. Second half, barely saw him. And it's just how it is. So as long as Fife can outscore that, then that's okay. We'll get to the bad parts very shortly. I'm pretty sure scaling hasn't happened in recording just yet. The Sava Radicalia 55, in the first half, he looked like, and it was pretty obvious that he hasn't defended at AFL level before. Um, He was going for grabs instead of spoils. Um, He was giving away clumsy free kicks. I think he gave away two in the first half, maybe even three, which was not ideal. Um, so I was a bit disappointed about that, but he delivered a really nice score in the end. Well, not a really nice score, but a solid score of 55. So I'm pretty happy with that. My one concern would be is Collingwood have one of the more weaker key forward, um, I guess, uh, matchups of Majacek and McStay and Cox, but um, he still only delivered a 55. So he's going to be have to he's going to have to be one that. Uh, we monitor, but he looked much better in the second half. Sorry, it got really dark here. Um, let me turn off brightness. So, I think Radicalia actually looked really good in the second half. He was getting spoils. I think he killed McStay, which sounds weird, but at the same time, I thought he held his own against McStay. Besides that one free kick he gave away in the goal score in the first quarter, I think, um, I thought he looked. Uh, he looked all right. So I don't think there's any reason, especially now if Jeremy Cameron might be having uh, a baby with his partner. Um, Hawkins was on one leg, so that doesn't look like a good sign. We'll get to Stuart. The conning was... Uh, yeah, he just wasn't himself, of course. He was injured himself. Um, and then... So they're really low on uh, key stocks down at, uh, in the forward line and in the back line. So, um, yeah, I think Radical Lee is in a good position. We're just, I, I'm just hoping that he can hold his spot until the bye and hopefully we can flick him then. So, yeah, look, I'm not too bad about Radical Lee. Radical Lee and Bruin are a pass on my end. I, thought, I, I tweeted out saying, hey, I think... Um, Tanner Bruin's going to be a bad miss and Radigalia is an awful pick, but um, Radigalia turned out all right. Bruin didn't turn out to be a horrible miss. So um, I think Bruin was still a bit stiff, but um, I'll, I'll take that, I guess. So let's get to the elephant in the room. Tom Stewart. 
Oh my god, this ruined my night. Um, so as soon as that happened, I was just like, I'm just going to enjoy the footy how it is because I didn't have anyone else on the field, so had to turn to alcohol. Canadian club, sugar free, very good. Um, I just think Stuart. I think he was stiff, and I don't think it was my fault picking him. I would have been more angry if it was a soft tissue injury, but he just landed awkwardly. Looks like a medial ligament. He was in a brace after the game. He was still walking, not in crutches, but he had a one of those braces. I've, I've had four knee surgeries in the past, so I clearly know how that feels like. But, yeah, Stuart has probably – it wasn't his fault because it was just a bad landing, but – uh, it's fair to say he's probably going to ruin my first week. Um, I'm going to be in for a bad score because Stewart, I think, is 32% owned. And I think Dacos is also around that mark who scored a 129. So that's really bad. Um, and, yeah, look, I'm not going to have a good rank this week. And it's a bit disappointing. Um, I'm really just going to have to save myself with Captain C, Vice Captain C, whatever it may be making the right decisions, hopefully no more injuries. But it's pretty clear. Um, Ralphie said at half time it looked like a medial ligament. It's not an ACL. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it kind of looked at it first. But um, I think Stuart, I was just stiff. Um, it wasn't a soft tissue injury. I know he has injury history in the past, but I thought that was a really stiff injury. And just sometimes you're just going to have to accept it and move on. So it's going to be a bad rank for me this week. Um, but we're just going to have to build on it. And, yeah, I'm look, straight to the point, I'm going to have to trade Tom Stewart. I'm going to have to trade him this week or next week um, because it looks like a two- to four-week injury with the medial ligament. And, yeah, I just can't afford to lose easy points that quick this season. So he's going to have to go for me. And if it's two to four weeks, even if he plays next week, even if he plays next week, it's going to be a massive issue because he's just not going to be himself. He doesn't look right. So um, if you're in a brace one week and then six days later when you play Carlton on a Thursday night, you play, I don't think that's going to be a good thing for Tom Stewart. So, um, yeah, look, I'm going to have to trade him. And I didn't. I, I hate using trades around one, so we're going to have to ignore about the Jacob Hopper trade. I was never going to trade Jacob Hopper, but... Hopefully no more injuries this week because Tom Stewart already has to go. Um, and now I'm down to 35 when most people, when people that don't own Tom Stewart will be on 36. So it's really bad. Um, yeah, so he's going to have to go probably for Jordan Dawson. We'll see how he goes against the Giants. They've got Richmond next week. I think he can leak a lot of easy points. He can score a lot of easy points against Richmond next week. They don't look that great. So, um but it's only one week. So, yeah, Tom Stewart's going to have to go. He's uh, made me have to drink alcohol when I've um, got basketball coaching the next day. So, not ideal. Um, yeah, I'm a bit deflated by Tom Stewart. Because I think, it, look, in summary, it wasn't my fault because, I mean, I picked Tom Stewart. If he did a soft tissue injury, then um, that's on me. But it was just a awkward landing. Um, glad it wasn't serious for his case. Um, he's such an important player for the Cats. So, but it's just going to ruin my first week, and I'm going to have. But luckily, really, we don't get an ideal, um, ideal situation in a rank by about round five, round six. So, it's going to be a bad first week for me. But um, hopefully, in rounds two, three, four, five, six, we get a better look at how we're doing. So, um. Uh, should we reveal everyone else? Um, it will piss me off. Dacos, Cats only kicked seven behind, so he could have scored much better than that. He takes kick-ins, looks amazing, rarely makes a mistake, never makes a mistake, should I add. Tom Mitchell, I'm not too fussed on. Uh, still, he had to kick two goals to get to 109, so uh, he's not going to be a goal-kicking mid every week. Josh Dacos looked really good. Uh, Degoe, amazing. Pendlebury, amazing. McCreary, that's going to be his highest score ever. Isaac Smith, I've got in my draft on my bench. Damn. Uh, Darcy Cameron, okay, I didn't didn't realise this. 103, but still Mason Cox is in the side, so I'd be concerned by that. 
I thought Jack Chris would score better than that. I thought he was better than a 90. O'Connor, side bottom, Maynard, Henry G. How, um, wasn't that an interesting game by Jack Henry? Bobby Hill, probably the best game of his career, in all honesty. Yeah, I don't want to touch on much else. Poor from Cam Guthrie. Dangerfield was poor. Uh, no longer a super coach option, for sure. Reef McInnes was the sub. If he's not the sub next week and he delivers another good score, we might have to consider about him. 176k. Just keep that in mind. Uh, Bruin, poor result for him. And then we've got all these blokes that uh, doesn't really matter too much. All the best to Jeremy Howe on his, on his um, uh, very poor injury. Uh, that was a real shame. Nathan Murphy, I thought it was good. Quain or poor score. I'm going to refresh and see if scaling's happened. It doesn't look like it has. No. Might even be scaling now. I just might not have noticed. I'll leave it there, guys. I've been recording long enough. Uh, rant and rave episode one wasn't exactly a, a, a rant and rave, but um, just, I guess, summarizing it all. Tom Stewart, damn you. I know it's not your fault, but yeah, that's no good. <laughs> so I'll see you guys in the next video. And um, yeah, hope you guys have a better week than me. You should. Cheers.